Wellington's favourite sporting son made a whirlwind return home last week to surprise a few old faces and some new ones. Michael Campbell not only arrived unannounced for his dad's birthday, but also made a guest appearance at the New Zealand Eisenhower team's leaving party. If you combine your ages, I'm best all older than you. <laughs> How old are you? Oh, 20, 22. 23? 23, yeah. I am too. <laughs> a rejuvenated Michael Campbell aimed to inspire the current crop of Kiwi amateurs to replicate the New Zealand 1992 Eisenhower victory, which launched Cambo on a path that ultimately saw him win the US Open. I think it's my responsibility, really, to pass on my knowledge, my experiences to these young kids who are like sponges right now. Um, I'll never forget I had a conversation with the great Jack Nicholas after winning the US Open. He said to me, Mark, now you've got the responsibility to, to grow the game in New Zealand. Um, it was a golden opportunity for me to come over here and, and share my, my thoughts. Luke Toomey and Ryan Chisnell will join up with US-based Nick Voke in Mexico at this week's World Amateur Teams Champs. And the day before the duo flew out, they spent the afternoon picking the brains of a golfer who won the Eisenhower Trophy before the current team was even born. We found ourselves in a position after three rounds, I think it was nine shots behind America. Oh, wow. They were the favorite, and we won by five. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, I remember at the closing ceremony, we learned afterwards that uh, all they had all they had, the officials, was the American National Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> so halfway after nine holes, they had to rush down to the New Zealand Embassy in Vancouver and grab a, a copy of the uh, National Anthem <laughs> of New Zealand. Uh, to play for your country to, with, with a silver fern on your chest uh, was just an incredible feeling. And yes, we were fortunate enough to win it for the first time back in 92 with Philip and Grant and Stephen Scarhill. So this is my way of giving back to the game. They got me going, really. Um, New Zealand Golf supported me since I was 15 years old. So it's seven, eight years of, of financially supporting me. So this is my way of giving back to them. I didn't expect him to, to go so in depth about what Eisenhower meant to him. Um, and, and, you know, just how high um, that mantra still stands, you know, amongst his, you know, 17 global wins, um, plus a major. So, you know, I feel incredibly grateful to, to have a day like today with Michael. Did you know, say, at the start of 92 that you were going to turn professional in 93? You'll probably get asked the question all the time, right, both of you, when are you going to turn pro? Yeah, yeah, And the most important thing I'm going to tell you right now, it's no age. You know, you can be 16 or 32 or something, whatever. If you're ready, if you know you're ready, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for me, it was pretty obvious because we won the Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I couldn't go any further. Yeah. Uh, Phil won the uh, individual, came second. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, just to, for him to give us give us time and come out and uh, speak to us was uh, yeah, a good thrill. I think talking to him about how he kind of built up his career and, and how he transitioned to the pro ranks was quite valuable to me. Whether I was ready or not was the, was the main question. So just uh, touching a few areas on that with him was uh, really enjoyable. Having given a glimpse into what it takes to win an Eisenhower Trophy, Michael took Luke and Ryan onto the course to show off the secrets of his famed short game. I have nine yarders for each wedge. Wow, nine. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot. Yeah, but after a while, it gets natural. Like, uh, okay, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Down this one, one finger, two fingers, three fingers. I know that um, one finger down, 10 o'clock swing with a 50, say 58. Goes 85 yards. Um, two fingers down, 10 o'clock swing goes 80 yards. Three fingers down, 10 o'clock swing goes 75 yards. Uh, for example, the last hole at, at Pinehurst, I had 75 yards for my third shot. To me, three fingers down, nine o'clock. Boom. Just like like a robot, you know. Michael remains a student of the game, and many of his methods were learned from his boyhood coach Mel Tung then evolved from time spent amongst Cambo's high-profile professional peers. This is my method on chipping. I've asked Mickelson, Savvy and VJ, and I've combined them together like a little blender. And this is how I think it should be done. I can have a high shot with a square club face. Delicious. What's that, mate? This could go anywhere. That's for a square club face. So it's almost feeling like you're doing this on the way down, but you're not. 
the feeling. Why flip? You know the old-fashioned way is open the cob face and cut across it? That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, Mel. Um, because when you cut across it, it's too much of a glancing blow. So you hit it just there or too far. This system, when we call it system, you're getting the full cob face. Exactly. It's more consistent. And under pressure, so much better. Nurturing young golf talent is something Campbell is passionate about and has a new career focus, having finally stored the clubs in the garage at his home in Marbella. I retired about four years ago, I think it is, or three years ago, and uh, ever since then I've refocused on something else. I've decided to start up uh, two golf academies. Uh, it's been fun. You know, I've been busy, but it's nice for me to just to reconnect with my boys because um, I've been an absent father for a long time, overseas playing. And now I spent the last three years at home and I'm cooking for them, I pick them up from school, whether it's been watching them play sport, something I've never done for a long time. The only thing I miss though, I must say, is just competing. And now I'm trying to beat my, my son in chess, so that's <laughs> I do miss competing. Uh, it's the biggest thing I miss from the whole game. Not the travelling, not catching um, flights to different parts of the world, restaurant food, the training, the practising, hours and hours of practising, the wind and the rain, the heat. I don't miss that, but I miss competing. And from the south of Spain, Michael has been keeping an eye on the state of New Zealand's latest batch of world beaters. And that includes a first PGA Tour winner since Cambo won in 2005, and a first Kiwi Major winner since that iconic moment at Pinehurst. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited to see um, the young talent coming through. Obviously, Lydia and Danny are doing fantastic golf. They're really um, flying the flag for New Zealand, which is was great. I think Danny will win more PGA Tour events. He's such a talented young man. And Lydia, well, who knows? Uh, she's going to break some more records, I think. Um, the record break in Lydia Coe, I just uh, really admire her. I met her, I saw her at the Augusta this year, and we had a little talk. And she's like a little little kid, just having fun. But this is where this game should be, just having fun. I told the guys, um, to Ryan and Luke, to have fun next week because it's obviously you've got the pressure of playing for your country. and. You know, it's the Eisenhower and that sort of stuff. Just enjoy yourself. Michael's also kept an eye on other Kiwi athletes and teams, including his beloved Super Rugby champions. Love my Hurricanes, and obviously this year's a this year a result well, for the Hurricanes is just uh, phenomenal. And yes, I'm a, of course I'm an All Black fan. I love the All Blacks. I love rugby, and I was fortunate enough to watch them play in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. And I'm passionate about watching other sports, not just just the rugby and other golfers, but also obviously the Olympics just been. Uh, it's nice to see so much uh, success we've had, and that it makes you proud to be a New Zealander. So I can I can kind of feel how other people feel watching me play golf when I was winning those tournaments. Uh, you feel proud that you know uh, that the Kiwi flag's been been flowing um, because I think we do you know, fight above our weight. So it's just good to see. Oh, I must start playing again. <laughs> <laughs> and while the 47-year-old will begin training soon for the seniors tour, Cambo is as content in retirement as he was during those golden years, winning tournaments in all corners of the world. 25 years is a long time. I can look back at my career, it's a pretty good one. I think winning so many times around the world, including a major, is pretty good, I think. Maybe, maybe not. People may not think so, but I think so. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm very content now. Uh, I've got a new life. My, my boys are healthy. I'm healthy, what more can I ask for? I'm happy. So uh, it's just a great opportunity for me to come back and share my, my thoughts and experiences with these two young sponges. You know, they're just complete sponges and a, a delight to teach. Uh, the great students of the game, I wish them all the very best. <laughs>